Master Hunter World provides hunters with numerous tools and weapons to take on the beasts that roam the world. With each weapon comes a unique set of moves and mechanics that a hunter must master. With training and knowledge of these, a hunter can decimate the monstrous foes that lie in their way. I'm Darblade, and in this video we're going to bring you a hunter's guide to the Insect Glaive. The Insect Glaive is one of the most agile weapons in the game. Combining two parts, the actual glaive and a kinsect companion, they work in unison to allow a hunter to perform fluid combos and highly effective airborne attacks. Now at the start of the fight the weapon is not that effective but if you utilise the kinsect you can extract buffs for your hunter, vastly increasing the effectiveness of the weapon by increasing your speed, defence and more importantly your attack. Maintaining these extract buffs as well as utilising the fluid combos and airborne attacks can make the insect glaive a very effective weapon. But anyway let's move on to talk about the basic moves of the insect glaive. Now before you get into this, one of the aspects that we'll talk about more in the mechanics section is the extract buffs, mainly the red extract buff. With this red extract, it converts most of the basic moves into alternative versions of them, normally resulting in more hits and generally increasing their damage. But anyway, the first move is the leaping slash, which is done either from a drawing attack by pressing triangle or by pressing the direction and circle with the weapon drawn. This move can also be performed mid combo should you be pressing forward in the circle. Next is the rising slash combo, which is done with your weapon drawn by pressing triangle. This is a nice little combo, however if you have red extract it will turn it into the strong rising slash combo, resulting in more hits. Next is the wide sweep which is done by pressing circle with your weapon drawn. There is also the strong wide sweep which is again done in the same way but requires you to have red extract in order to do so. Next is the overhead smash which is done by pressing circle either after a rising slash combo or a wide sweep. This could be considered a finisher move as you can't really combo into other moves once you've finished performing it. However, should you have red extract, overhead smash will turn into the tornado slash instead. And it's performed in the same way, so pressing circle following a wide sweep or rising slash combo. And again, it's more of a combo finishing move. However, this is the strongest individual hit that the insect glaive can do, so maybe consider using it for sleeping monsters, especially if you have no other options available to you. Next is thrust, which is done while walking by pressing triangle. If you have red extract, this will turn into the strong thrust which is performed in exactly the same way. Next is Reaping Slash, which is triangle, either after a Rising Slash combo, Thrust or Strong Thrust. There can also be a Strong Reaping Slash, should you have Red Extract. Next is Double Slash, which is again performed by pressing triangle, following a Reaping Slash or Strong Reaping Slash. Again, this can be turned into a Strong Double Slash, should you have Red Extract, and it's performed in exactly the same way. Next is the dodge slash, which can be performed a mid combo by pressing back and circle. This will cause your hunter to roll backwards slashing along the way, which comes in handy for repositioning your hunter. Now next is the vault move, which is a very useful mechanic for the insect glaive. This is done by pressing R2 and X. This will cause your hunter to vault into the sky, allowing them to become airborne, after which a series of other basic moves become available to you. First of all is the mid air evade, which is done by pressing X whilst airborne following a vault. You can aim this in any direction and can be used to either close the gap on a monster or, as the name suggests, evade an attack. Next is the jumping slash which is done following a vault by pressing triangle. There is also a strong version of this should you have red extract and performing either one of these moves will cause your hunter to fall back to the ground slashing along the way. This comes in useful for if you need to get back on the ground quickly or if you want to mount a monster. And then next is the jumping advance slash which is done following a vault so while you're airborne and pressing circle. Now if you should hit a monster with this attack then you'll perform a vaulting dance afterwards. This is done automatically, however this allows you to pretty much reset your airborne attacks and stay airborne for an indefinite amount of time, well at least until you run out of stamina. So should you successfully hit with a jump in advance and slash, you'll have a chance to do another one or even perform a mid-air evade and then go into another jump in advance and slash and should that hit then you can rinse and repeat the process. There is also a strong jump in advance and slash should you have red extract now this turns the move into a bit of a combo flurry, however the effect of staying airborne, i.e. performing the vaulting dance, will only occur should the final hit of the strong jump in advance and slash actually connect with the monster. So this is something to take into consideration. You can actually aim both the jump in slash and the jump in advance and slashes by pressing the direction when performing the moves. But anyway moving away from the basic moves regarding the glaive and let's talk about the kinsec basic moves. The first move is Kinsect Harvest, which is done in two ways. The first is you can do this from a drawing attack by pressing R2. This will cause your Kinsect to fly off from your wrist where it's housed towards the location in front of you. As a draw attack this is a quick way to get the fight started to get your Kinsect extracting the buffs you require. 
However, a more reliant way to do this is to press L2 and triangle whilst aiming with the right stick. This will cause your Kinsec to fly towards whatever you're aimed at and collect the extract buff that way. Now depending on what body part you'll hit will result in different buffs but we'll talk about that more in the mechanics section. Anyway, once the Kinsect has got a buff, you can either press L2 and triangle again to manually cause the Kinsect to extract the buff again but dealing damage at the same time, or press L2 and circle to perform a Kinsect recall. This will cause the Kinsect to come back to you, bringing the extract buff along with it and transferring it to you, thus providing you with that upgrade. However, there are a few other moves available to the Kinsect. First is the Kinsect mark target, which can be done in two ways. First is pressing R2 in the middle of a combo. This will cause whatever you smash with your glaive to become marked, after which the Kinsect will constantly attack that marked body part, not only getting the extract for when you want to recall it, but leaving Kinsect dust, which we'll talk about more in the mechanic section, behind on the monster's location. In short, the dust is a utility that the hunter can use to cause various status elements to a monster or even heal themselves. Now you can also mark a monster without having to be in melee range and thus be a bit more tactical with what body part you mark for your Kinsect to attack. This is done by holding L2, aiming with the right stick and then pressing R2 to fire the Kinsect. It's not actually firing a Kinsect, it's more firing some orange goo which the Kinsect is attracted to. After which it will attack the marked body part, leaving dust behind until it's recalled, or the Kinsect runs out of stamina. But anyway, moving away from the basic moves to talk about the unique mechanics of the Insect Glaive. Now as I said at the start, the Insect Glaive could be divided into two categories, the Glaive and the Kinsect. Together they work in unison to make the Insect Glaive what it is. But the Kinsect and its functions is what makes the Insect Glaive so versatile and useful. This is because the Kinsect, the insect that is located on your right arm, can be sent off towards a monster's location to harvest different extracts from a monster. These extracts are another term for buffs, basically. And these, along with the other Kinsect information, is indicated in the top left-hand corner of the screen underneath your sharpness gauge. Now you'll see an insect shape as well as three diamonds labelled one, two and three. On top of that there'll be a little gauge underneath this which indicates your Kinsect stamina. Anyway, once you send your Kinsect off to get an extract, the bug will light up either red, white, orange or green. This will indicate the type of buff you will receive when you call the insect back to you. Now red means you'll get an attack increase as well as improving your basic moves and this is something to always strive for first. White will increase your mobility and it will also allow you to vault higher. Orange will reduce knockback and green will restore your health. However, you have to take into consideration what body part of a monster your Kinsect is attacking to what extract you're going to get. For example, the red extracts normally come from the head or claws, so the more offensive parts of the body. White normally comes from the wings or legs, so the part of the body that gives the monster mobility. And orange normally comes from the back or sometimes the tail of a monster, normally the stuff that gives them more defense. Green on the other hand normally comes from the tails of larger monsters and some monsters won't have this whatsoever. So sometimes you have to get used to accidentally sending your Kinsect off to attack the wrong body part. So you have to get used to restarting the process over again. Now the good thing about the Kinsect is you don't have to just stick to one buff. You can in fact collect all of them. So you can have all three diamonds lit up, red, white and orange. And doing so will give you increased buffs. For example, should you have red and white extract, so that's increased attack and increased mobility, it will give you an additional attack up should you have both of these active. Should you have white and orange, it will give you another defense up as well as a medium level earplugs which allows you to resist some monsters roars. And should you have all three active then on top of the already red, white and orange effects it will give you another attack up, another defense up and earplugs as well. So striving to double up or triple up will allow for optimal performance with the insect wave. Now unfortunately the Kinsect buffs don't last forever and you have to get used to them sometimes dropping out and having to start the process and getting all the extracts once more. Now when it comes to the Kinsect itself, it's treated almost like a independent weapon. You can manage and nurture your Kinsects at the workshop and there are certain aspects of each Kinsect that you have to be aware of. For example, the attack type of the Kinsect, so it could be a severing or blunt Kinsect, could dictate which one you want to go for. For example, a blunt Kinsect would be better sent off to hit an enemy's head to potentially knock them out, whilst the severing one could be sent towards the tail to chop it off. You have to also consider the dust effect, but we'll talk about that in a minute. You can also add different elements to the Kinsect depending on what monster you're fighting. You might also want to consider the power, speed, heal and bonus of the Kinsect. Power indicates how strong the Kinsect hits. 
Speed is very important as it indicates how fast a kinsect will fly towards a monster and then back to you. If you have a fast kinsect for example, then it means you should be able to get all the extracts relatively quickly. And heal indicates how much the kinsect would heal you should it have green extract. Lastly, the kinsect bonus is something to consider. For example, you can get several blunt boosts which increase the damage of that type. You have an elemental boost that increases the elemental damage dealt by the kinsect. Health boost that increases the amount recovered from green extracts and speed boost that increases the actual flying speed of the kinsect. So all of these are worth considering when picking what bug you want. And finally with the unique mechanics when it comes to the kinsect is the kinsect dust. Now should you mark a target either through pressing R2 mid combo or via the L2 and then R2 to manually mark the target. When the kinsect flies off and homes in and attacks that body part it will leave behind kinsect dust. Now this dust cloud will depend on what type of kinsect you are using. However, they all work the same in that when you actually attack or your allies attack that dust cloud, it will explode, applying either a status effect to the monster or potentially healing your team. There is poison dust, which can potentially poison a monster. They are indicated by purple clouds. There's paralysis dust, which can paralyze a monster. This is indicated with yellow clouds. Blast dust, which allows you to deal blast damage to a monster. These are indicated with orange dust clouds. And then there's healing kinsect dust clouds, which are indicated in green and they actually heal you or your allies. Now, unfortunately, you can only have six dust clouds active at any one point, And if you don't activate them manually, they will eventually fade over time. Nonetheless, though, the kinsect dust is a great little bonus to the kinsect, adding some utility to the weapon. Now, on the whole, though, I only tend to mark the target and activate the kinsect dust after I've got the free extract buffs. But anyway, moving away from the unique mechanics to talk about the useful combos for the insect glaive. Now I'm not really going to talk about any of the combos in their base form, i.e. no red extracts, as you always want to try to get at least a red extract before starting your attacks. But should you actually manage to get red extract, then there are a few combos available to you. The basic bread and butter one, which allows you to continuously attack, is triangle, followed by triangle, and then circle, and then you rinse and repeat. Now once you first start out with the insect glaive, it may be hard to actually picture where you press circle in this combo. But think of it like this, as you see your hand to perform the strong rise and slash combo, which is the free hit combo, press triangle once more after this and then after the next two hits press circle after that, rinse and repeat. The next combo is a variation of this and it allows you to reposition yourself making use of the dodge slash. So you could call it the dodge slash combo. Anyway this is performed in pretty much the exact same way, so press triangle for the strong rise and slash combo, then triangle for the strong reaping slash, and then press back and circle to perform the dodge slash to reposition yourself. Now this combo can be implemented at any time in the bread and butter combo, especially if the monster moves or you find yourself out of position. The next combo is the finisher combo, which is not an infinite combo unfortunately. This one will bring your combo string to an end, but has a strong last hit. This is done by performing the strong rising slash combo, so triangle, follow that up with the reaping slash with triangle again, follow that with the double slash which is triangle, and then press circle to perform the tornado slash. And then finally is the airborne combo, which is done by pressing R2 and X, then pressing direction and X to reposition yourself with a mid-air evade, then pressing circle to perform the strong jumping advancing slash, then a direction and circle again, rinse and repeat until you run out of stamina or until you're knocked out of the air. Now most of the moves and combos in Monster Hunter World can be intertwined with one another. Just because I suggest these combos here doesn't mean you have to stick to them. You can implement whatever move you want in the middle of a combo string. Anyway, let's move away from the useful combos to talk about the aerial and environmental moves available to the Insect Glaive. Now again, these moves depend if you have red extract or not. Should you jump off a ledge or run up a tree and then jump off of it? You can perform either a jumping slash or a strong jumping slash by pressing triangle. Or you can perform a jumping advancing slash or strong jump in advance and slash by pressing circle. You can also perform a mid-air evade by pressing a direction and X. However, a slight change is when you're sliding down a slope. Should you slide down a slope and press triangle, you will perform a jump in advance and slash or strong jump in advance and slash, which is normally the circle move while you're airborne. Now an interesting move when it comes to the environment is that should you jump or vault into a runnable wall or tree, if you push the left stick towards that wall, then the player will stick to it. Basically you all make like an insect and hold on to the surface, not moving until you either press a direction and X to jump off of it, or press an X on its own to drop down. After you've jumped away from sticking to a wall, you can perform the other airborne moves available to the insect glaive. Also when you mount a monster, when you transition between the different body parts with the insect glaive, you'll cause multiple slashes along the way. 
dealing considerably more damage than the standard attacks you do while you're mounting a monster. However, this will consume stamina, so do this too often and you'll be thrown off. But anyway, let's move on to talk about the additional tips for the Insect Glaive. Now I've covered a lot of the functions of the Insect Glaive already, but on the whole it all comes down to managing your Kinsects correctly. As I said, when it comes to actually getting your Extract buffs, try to learn the monster you're fighting, either going for the legs, arms, back, head, tail, whatever gives you the buffs you miss. Some are more difficult than others, and sometimes it's better just to go with a double up, i.e. two buffs, than spend a long time trying to get all three of them and not causing any damage at all to the monster. I can't stress it enough though to always try to go for that red extract. It should also be noted as well when it comes to the extracts you can actually re-harvest them to refresh the duration of that set one. So for example if you notice the red is about to go then re-extract the red to reset the timer on that specific one. However this won't affect the white and orange in which case you have to go back and refresh those individually as well. It is also worth noting as well when you go from a single extract to a double up to a triple up then at each point these will refresh all three bonuses. It should also be noticed that while you're in triple up so you have all three kinset bonuses they don't last as long as individual or just simply double up buffs so it requires more extract maintenance to maintain. Also when it comes to your mid-air abilities whilst the mid-air evade gives you the option to evade monsters as it's in the name you can also use the jump in advances slash to avoid monsters as well as this pushes the hunter quite a distance so if you need to get away aim away from the monster and press circle to get some distance between you and your foe. Another tip is if you notice that your monster is incapacitated either by a trap being knocked out whatever then this could be an ideal time especially if you've already got all your kinsect extract buffs to tag the monster to create some kinsect dust as the monster should still be in the vicinity of the dust when they wake up, which allows you to ignite it afterwards, inflicting the monster with whatever status ailment you're using. And finally, unfortunately the Kinsect doesn't really come with any mind's eye attacks, however, if you find you're bouncing off a monster's hide a lot, then take to the sky and attack from the air. But anyway, let's move away from the additional tips to talk about the pros and cons of the Insect Glaive. The major pro for the weapon is its high mobility and quick attacks. This is a very mobile weapon, not only on the ground, especially if you've got white extract, but also in the air. Also, its quick attacks allow for fluid combos that are even stronger should you have red extract. The next major pro is the extracts themselves. Being able to buff yourself in numerous ways enhances almost every aspect of the Insect Glaive. And finally, the last major pro is that the Insect Glaive is easily the best aerial weapon in the game. Being able to stay in the air not only gives you decent opportunity to mount a monster, as you don't actually have to jump off a ledge or something, but it also gives you numerous defensive options as you're easily able to avoid incoming attacks. However, on the flip side, when it comes to the cons, unfortunately maintaining the extracts and managing your Kinsect is required to maintain effectiveness with the weapon. So not only do you have to manage your Kinsect stamina, what buffs you're getting, but if you take too long doing this as well, you're going to be dropping in DPS. And then finally, the other major con I find is that the weapon, especially when you're airborne, burns through sharpness really quickly. While certain skills like protective polish and that can alleviate this slightly, it's nonetheless an annoyance with the weapon. Now overall the Insect Glaive is a very versatile weapon. Whilst it may not be the hardest hitting weapon in the game, thanks to the Kinsect's buffs as well as the combos it can perform, it still enables you to take on hunts with ease. On top of that it has access to the skies, which other weapons don't really have. Being able to attack and pretty much almost stay in the air indefinitely so long as you've got stamina is an advantage that this weapon has that others don't. Being in the air allows you to avoid monsters attacks quite easily, although you should be aware that you can still be knocked out, especially by things like roars and that. With the Insect Glaive as well you can also easily mount monsters without having to rely on the environment. The Kinsect, Kinsect Dust and Kinsect Extract buffs will take a little bit of time to master but once you do your performance with this weapon will be vastly increased. If you're a player who loves style, who loves speed, fast attacks and especially who likes the option to become airborne then I can easily recommend the Insect Glaive to you. Now remember that the damage numbers and effectiveness of the weapons can vary due to numerous factors from gear, buffs, monster defences to even the environment. All of these can help or hinder a weapon's performance. With that in mind learning as much about your weapon as possible can help you achieve a successful hunt. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative, and until next time, I've been Darplay, bringing you a hunter's guide to the insect glaive in Monster Hunter World. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.